Greetings to you, dear beloved of God. Welcome to this video. And I have to say it. Were you satisfied with the I learned this word just now, denouement of the previous video? Because there was a cliffhanger in the video before that, but I told you you were not going to be disappointed. So I hope that you have enjoyed that part of the video at least not only that he comes back jesus comes back to egypt but especially that he totally retraces the complete exodus including parting the red sea that is marvelous that is fantastic at least for us now in these bodies of course so let's continue in this video, I expect that we will come to the end of uh, another section and then we will go to, um, to the, uh, another section called the return of Jesus, but then from another angle. And that is that um, uh, we will now, uh, let's say, shine light from another angle and that is only reading passages and try, just try, to make it as chronologically as possible. Probably it will not be 100% chronological, but we will try to do that and you will understand and maybe on the way, I will maybe explain some things extra. But these will, will be a lot of passages from scripture only with some little um, um, highlighting of things or explanations, but a lot of passages also with repetitions from previous uh, passages so and then i hope that at the end by the end of this study that you are quite saturated and drilled down with this uh, story of the glorious and powerful return of jesus christ let's continue <coughs> Excuse me. This was the last slide, right? Okay. So, we know now that God has, has a good sense of humor. Comparing uh, the club of Assyria and the lifting over Israel, his rod in the manner of Egypt, comparing with what he will do through his son, the Messiah, when his rod will be upon the sea and will lift it up in the manner of Egypt as well. Great. I love it. Let's continue. Just as Moses raised his staff and the Red Sea parted, it is prophesied that Jesus, the prophet surpassing Moses, you can read about that in Deuteronomy 18, Jesus will similarly, similarly raise his staff over the sea. In the subsequent chapter, this theme is reiterated as it introduces the concept of a second grander, much grander exodus. Let's take a look. Isaiah 11 verse 12, where it reads, and it will come to be in that day Yahweh shall again lift up his hand that's Jesus to be zealous for the remnant of his people which shall remain from Assyria and from Egypt from Pathros and from Cush from Elam and from Shinar from Hamath and from the coastlands of the sea he will lift up a banner for the nations and gather the expelled of Israel, and he shall convene the scattered of Judah from the four wings of the earth. Again, this is clear language. This will actually happen, literally, of course. All these events are foretold to occur upon Jesus' return. However, the chapter concludes with a startling declaration. During the final phase of redemption, what will happen? That's verse 15 of Isaiah 11. Then Yahweh will 
drain the tongue of the sea of Egypt. That is the Red Sea. He will again, I will repeat, he will drain the tongue of the sea of Egypt and wave his hand over the stream with the vehemence of his wind and he will smite it into seven wadis and one will tread it, uh, will tread it in sandals and I add and their feet will be dry neatly dry if you know what I mean so the mention of the tongue of the sea of Egypt refers obviously to the Red Sea where the Israelites crossed also in ancient times. Isn't that marvelous? Once again it is foretold to be struck and divided the sea that is, allowing the Israelites to walk through on just dry land. Their feet will not get wet. Similarly, in this profound desert prophecy, Habakkuk portrays, G portrays Jesus leading a majestic march through the desert. We know about that because we read it. And now we understand it better because it also says in verse 15, You tread in the sea with your horses, the turbid mass of fast waters. So Habakkuk 3 verse 15, now, we, now it comes to life more for us. Because now we see that you cannot just tread in the sea with horses because they will drown and you will drown with them. So it is because the sea will be split. The imagery of treading in the sea with his horses suggests a repetition of parting the sea. Oh yes, for sure. Furthermore, Zechariah contributes to this very same narrative. Within the context of God gathering his people from all corners of the world, Zechariah proclaims this, I will restore them from the land of Egypt and from Assyria I shall convene them. Zechariah 10 verse 10 and subsequently he affirms in verse 11, he passes in the sea of distress and he smites the billows in the sea and all the shadowy depths of the waterway, listen to this, will be dried up. Oh yes, the pride of Assyria will be brought down and the scepter of Egypt, it shall be taken away. Wow, I, I mean, if, you, if I read these things, I think about God's marvelous plan. Fantastic. Because when it says the pride of Assyria will be brought down, it alludes to the past. The same Assyrian Pharaoh in the time of Moses, because he was Assyrian also, you see how God combines things and um, reiterates it, it and in a greater sense with the Messiah. It is fantastic. It is fantastic. So, the recurring theme of the Lord splitting the Red Sea once more, <coughs> particularly in the context of Israel's final redemption, emerges repeatedly in prophetic text as we have already seen Zechariah Isaiah Habakkuk as an example considering all aspects the notion that Jesus will revisit Egypt and reenact the entire Exodus route finds substantial support in scripture among various interpretations this perspective rarely explored by students of scripture, sadly, regrettably, appears to be the most credible view, especially when applying a comprehensive approach to scriptural insights. And the last slide of this section, Jesus as the superior Moses and radiance of God 
will lead the ultimate exodus journey from Egypt through the Red Sea to Mount Sinai and onward to Jerusalem through Edom also and Moab and Ammon etc but then to Jerusalem the aim here is to delve into what scriptures reveal about this significant event and appreciate the magnificence of Jesus glorious return it is a topic that inspires excitement among believers hopefully but I think that is the case and those chosen from Israel alike also of course when it's their time to be God's people again of course when they and they will see these passages oh they will exult in gladness and joy I'm sure of that with their their expectation will be fantastic of course all right that's the end of this section so now we continue the next section so we will again now again from another point of view highlight <coughs> excuse me the glorious and powerful return of Jesus this summary and it's a summary but with a lot of passages of scripture this aims to provide an outline of the events surrounding Jesus return and subsequent presence parousia it is not exhaustive and may repeat certain themes when a text contains multiple motives then the text will appear again in later instances this doesn't offer a detailed chronology of every aspect related to his return the the intention is not to merge this perspective with a meticulous or rigid timeline of the seals trumpets and bowls of Reve revelation that's not the purpose neither is it an attempt to align jesus return with specific scriptural holy days feasts rituals fasts or festivals instead the goal of this section is to present a general overview of the key stages of jesus triumphant journey to jerusalem okay <coughs> let's look at the role of the trumpet during the return and the presence of jesus drawing from the pattern established during the grand theophany in the past at mount sinai where god manifested himself amidst the resounding of a great trumpet this overview sets the stage for understanding the significance of jesus return in a broader context let's read from exodus 19 verse 16 it came to be on the third day remember the third day that is the day after the 2000 years you could say the two days right the 2000 years since jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven it came to be on the third day <coughs> at the coming of the morning that there came to be thunderclaps and flashes and a heavy cloud on the mount the sound of a trumpet exceedingly steadfast so that all the people who were in the camp trembled <coughs> verse 18 through 20 as for mount sinai all of it smoked in view of the fact that yahweh descended on it in fire its smoke ascended as the smoke of a lime kiln and the entire mountain trembled exceedingly while the sound of the trumpet came to be growing even and exceedingly steadfast moses he was speaking and the one elohim he was answering him with a loud voice yahweh descended on mount sinai to the summit of the mountain then yahweh called moses to the summit of the mountain and moses ascended let's look at isaiah 27 verse 13 
it will also come to be in that day a great trumpet shall be blown and those perishing in the land of Assyria will come and the outcasts in the land of Egypt and they will worship Yahweh in the holy mount in Jerusalem. The holy mount is Zion and this talks about the future, right? We know that, right? It will come to be in that day. Zechariah 9 verse 14 Then Yahweh, he shall appear over them and his arrow will go forth like lightning and my Lord Yahweh, he shall blow the trumpet and he will march in the tempests of the south. Matthew 24 31 Well known. And he, that's Jesus, shall be the son of mankind shall be dispatching his messengers with a, with a loud son, sounding trumpet and they shall be assembling his chosen from the four winds from the extremities of the heavens to their extremities <coughs> so when jesus returns he will come riding on the clouds because now we are looking at the role of the clouds in this narrative. Once more, the pattern for this began during the Exodus also. Exodus 19, verse 16 uh, and 17. It came to be on the third day, we know now what the third day means, at the coming of the morning, that there came to be thunderclaps and flashes and now the accent or the emphasis on the cloud, a heavy cloud on the mount and the sound of a trumpet exceedingly steadfast so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Yet Moses brought the people forth from the camp to meet the one Elohim. So they stationed themselves at the nether part of the mountain. With the Theophany at Sinai, and the Theophany can also be, of course, a messenger on behalf of Yahweh. That's also a Theophany because it is on behalf of Yahweh, just to be clear on that. So with the Theophany at Sinai, serving as a powerful foreshadowing, Moses and the prophets then began to envision God coming on the clouds in the future to save his people. Again, look at Deuteronomy 33, the blessing of Moses, verse 26. There is none like the El of Jeshurun riding the heavens as your helper and in his augustness the skies. Again, this is alluding to the future and then in practice, this is talking about Jesus Christ. And we know already that Jeshurun is like a pet name for Israel, his people. So um, let's do one more slide and then we end this video. We are still at the, the, the subtopic of the role of the clouds. Let's look at Judges 5, the song of Deborah, verse 4 and 5. O Yahweh, at your going forth from Seir and at your march from the fields of Edom, the earth quaked. Indeed, the heavens dropped, and the thick clouds too, they dropped water. The mountains flowed at the presence of Yahweh. Sinai was in commotion at the presence of Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Again, be assured that this is alluding to the future, the return of Jesus Christ. 2 Samuel 22, verse 10, and Psalms uh, 80, uh, 18, verse 9. He stretched out the heavens and descended, and murkiness was beneath his feet. Again, alluding to the return of Jesus Christ. But, let's be again clear that he who stretched out the heavens is Yahweh, God Almighty, the God and Father of Jesus Christ. And he descended through his perfect representative, i.e. Jesus Christ. 
So I hope you see that more clearly all the time while pondering about these things. So thank you very much for having watched this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.